I could make some money driving my own car and help you too, wouldn't that be great? Your lift has arrived. Thousands of people already do that thanks to new cell phone technology that lets ordinary car owners offer rides to people. People who want a ride open an application. This one's called Lyft. Others include Sidecar. They press a button, and that flags a nearby driver. In this case, me. We got one. Lyft makes its drivers put this ridiculous mustache on our cars. It's a marketing gimmick, but it also helps a person who wants a pickup spot the car. I also have the passenger's phone number. Your destination is on the left. And his name. Tim. Unlike normal cabs, Lyft drivers invite customers to get in the front seat. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Is this your Thanks first uh, Lyft ride? My first Lyft. Okay. Yes. Where are you headed? Tim signed up for Lyft because it's cheaper than taxis, maybe 20% cheaper. I had friends who've used it, and they've raved about it. He likes it that Lyft passengers sit in front. Lyft's founder says that makes for a friendlier ride. You see the pink mustache, oftentimes the passenger smiles, the driver smiles, you get in the front seat, there's a fist bump, uh, and it's, it's a new experience of connecting with other people in your community. You meet someone with different political beliefs, someone with different music tastes. There's been companies that have been formed with drivers and passengers. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. No cash changed hands, payments by credit card only. And the price is up to the passenger. If he didn't like me, he can tell his app to pay me less. Of course, then he'll have a tougher time getting the next Lyft ride. Now I'm going to rate Tim. I liked him, so I give him five stars. That'll make it easier for him to hire the next Lyft driver. On to the next one. Welcome. I'm supposed to give you a fist bump. Have you, have you used Lyft before? I have. All right, where are you going? Now, why would she feel safe getting into a stranger's car? Everyone I've taken so far has been very nice. First of all, not everyone can be a Lyft driver. My car had to pass inspection, and I had to pass a background check. But the real reassurance comes from the passengers and drivers rating each other. You can see, you know, pictures of them and their car, their ratings. If you get bad ratings, you can't drive anymore. What if the passenger is obnoxious? Goes, Smells bad. Goes both ways. So there's ratings on the drivers and there's ratings on the passengers. People get rides. I make some money. What a great deal. Who would object to that? <laughs> Taxi drivers, that's who. Cabbies lined up their cabs, then let them sit, in protest of car sharing apps used in the city. New ideas like Lyft make established industry players angry. Damn right we are. It's our families. We have to pay big money for licenses. We have to get fingerprinted. We have to have commercial insurance. Pink Mustache has nothing. Sidecar has nothing. Well, not nothing. There is that background check and the ratings but Lyft drivers don't have to obey all the city's taxi rules. They just don't comply with the law. Bill Rouse runs the biggest cab company in Los Angeles. You want to ban the competition? We're not trying to ban the competition. What we'd like is to be competing with companies that follow the rules. But the Lyft cars have to meet the safety standards. They Who's yeah. safety standards? The Lyft states the license. They're licensed as private vehicles. There's no safety standards there. This is the honor system. Actually, it's something better than the honor system. If I'm checking my app and I, oh, this driver's been criticized by his passengers, that's not the honor system. That's the world policing him. That's all after the fact. In Washington, D.C., bureaucrats got so upset with car sharing businesses, they even did sting operations. Today, however, D.C. tolerates services like Lyft. They became too popular for regulators to strangle. There's no evidence that regulated cabs are safer. Here in New York, a licensed cab driver jumped a curb, hit a woman, admitted I shouldn't be driving. That doesn't cry out for less safety regulation. It actually cries out for more vigorous enforcement of the safety regulations. Of course, that regulation makes it hard for outsiders to compete. Most of the rules that exist in the transportation industry are designed to protect existing transportation companies from competition. In many cities, no innovative taxi company dares open. In Nashville, Tennessee, bureaucrats demanded that every car service but established companies must charge at least $45 a ride. 
I have to charge them $45 for going four blocks. Nobody's going to ride for 45 It was all protectionism to protect the taxi industry. When Ali Bokhari started Metro Livery, it was a great success. But the new $45 minimum ended that. We lost all that clients and they went back to taxi. Ali fought Nashville's rules in court, but the bureaucrats won. Why would they want to protect existing business? Because existing businesses are politically connected. Got some extra space in your house? Want to make some money renting it? Now you can. Here's our room. I think it's pretty nice. Here's the stairs. They're going to sand them, but I think it actually looks cool. They? Who's they? I think this is their office. Victoria Hockton doesn't know much about this apartment because it belongs to strangers, and she and her mom just arrived. They're from Florida, but they wanted to visit New York City for a few days, and they prefer to stay in a home. A lot better than being in a hotel by far. Being in the city with a child, it's much more convenient because not only are his breakfasts amazing. Alistair Ong renovated his apartment and then decided to try to make some extra money renting his extra space to tourists. I just love meeting new people and from all different parts of the world. That's why he makes his breakfasts part of the deal. He advertised his extra space on websites like Airbnb, which stands for Air Bed and Breakfast, and Rumorama.com. Trendy loft, steps from Times Square, $149. In this neighborhood, that's cheaper than a hotel. Plus, Julie liked the pictures on the website and comments from previous guests, like, the apartment is cozy, felt like a home away from home. Not only are we able to use the fridge, we have a microwave, fresh hot coffee. Oh, I'll make it. Julie likes staying in homes because this way her daughter gets to learn a little about how different people live. Messy is comfortable. The Rumorama website is run by Gia and Teo. She and her husband created it because they travel a lot. So we said, hey, there must be thousands of apartments empty right now. How do we find them? How do we book them? And how might they rent their home when they travel? Why not just go to Craigslist? Well, because on Craigslist, you don't know who you're dealing with. We dealt with people who just never showed up, uh, people who refused to pay in advance because they didn't know who we were. So that's why we started Rumorama. But how do I know I'm not going to get some guest who's going to trash the place? Well, there are reviews on the site, so everything's very transparent for both sides. The reviews, the internet feedback, this crowdsourcing is what makes these cool ideas work. Julia and Victoria knew that Alistair's a good host. Alistair knew less about them. Most guests don't have as, um, as many reviews, so I'll try to do, once I get their name, I'll try to do a Facebook search on them, but generally, I've had really good luck. He's happy, they're happy. And this wonderful new business where strangers with complementary needs find each other keeps growing. Get on a website. So, of course, politicians crack down. Don't have her into an illegal hotel room situation. Have a terrible experience. This politician got a law passed that bans anyone from renting their own apartment to anyone for a time period of less than a full month. If you do, you're an illegal hotel, and you can be fined up to $25,000. The hotel industry supports the law to protect tourists, they say. They walk into a situation that is not safe, not clean. Really? When we asked for names of complainants, her office didn't provide any. There are people begging <laughs> legislators for the law to be overturned. The good news is that despite all the laws, sometimes entrepreneurs and their customers still win. Room for rent website listings are up since New York's law passed. People like Alistair make some money, tourists like the Hocktons save money, and both have an experience they normally wouldn't have. Bye. Enjoy your class. It was amazing. Quick, easy, fun. The cheaper taxi services survive. The regulators pounce and the business grows. Yeah, the business is growing incredibly fast. We've had people say multiple times that Lyft has restored their faith in humanity. But the bad news is that in there and in state capitals everywhere, they keep adding more red tape. They should stop, but they won't stop. <laughs>